Here's something I've been thinking about. What's the plural of sweet tooth? Would you say we have sweet teeth? I've never heard anyone say we have sweet teeth, but I feel like it's the most grammatically correct option. We have sweet teeth or we have, it can't be we have a sweet tooth. We have sweet tooths. Hey y'all, it's time for another episode of everyone's favorite television program, What's Cheering Me Up Right Now? Yay! And I feel like uh, it's sorely needed right now, um, what with everything that has been going on. I mean, it's been totally bananas. I haven't really had occasion to talk about this on camera yet, but white supremacists tried to overthrow the government and there are new strains of the virus and cases are spiking in California in particular. So it's been a really stressful time. Also some sad stuff going on in my personal sphere, a loss in the family, um, actually a couple of kinds of loss in the family, um, which I, we'll talk about in time, but I'm not gonna talk about now. And um, I don't have the bandwidth really to process any of it out loud, um, but I do want to take a moment just to reiterate my love and support for Black Lives. Black Lives Matter, Black Joy Matters, and the white supremacists in Washington do not define America and do not define humanity. And I know that this video is just a paltry offering, but I hope that it can provide some kind of, of tool, some, uh, some kind of suggestion for an increase in joy and self-care for everybody out there in the coming week or two. If this is your first time to my my Hannah, if this is your first time to my Hannah, hello, my name is Channel, and uh, I love beautiful things. And I love other things too. Most of what I'm talking about in this video is just wonderful stuff that's not necessarily beauty related, although we will be talking a little bit about makeup. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel if you aren't subscribed. And let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. Okay, a particularly juicy list I feel like this time. Um, oh, but I did wanna tell you about this top because it's one of the things that I purchased with my little seasonal budget at the very beginning of January. And it's from this awesome Etsy shop. I, I really um, focused, I, I'm not gonna talk all about my budget in this video because I'm gonna be covering it at length and the things that I purchased, but um, I was enjoying in particular buying from individuals through Poshmark and supporting this really cool small business on Etsy. It's called Billedu, is that right? Billedu Apparel? I feel like it's right, but I don't wanna get it wrong. Yeah, it must be pronounced either Billedo or Billedu Apparel modern hand dyed items. So it's 100% cotton t-shirt and all of this dyeing and, and acid spotting and you know amazing galaxy painting work uh, was hand done and it's a one of a kind piece. And the pieces are reasonably priced and um, just absolutely stunning every single one of them. So uh, I'm really, really glad that I decided to buy this in my budget. And this is the first time I've worn it actually. It's not just the first time I've worn it on camera. I really, really love this woman's work. I will of course link Billy Do or Billy Do apparel down below, the Etsy shop and her Instagram account. And it was one of you who recommended, I'm sorry they don't remember who it was, but I got an Instagram DM like months and months ago from one of you being like, I think you'll like this artist's work. And I clicked through and I saved it and I followed her as she just launched her, launched her Etsy, Etsy shop, which was pretty recent. And then I went ahead and, and purchased a piece. So thank you for the recommendation whoever you are. Um, and yeah, thanks Billy Do or Billy Do Apparel. I bet it's Do. Billy Do. Billy Do. All right, the meat of the video, the meat of the meat. Um, okay, a particularly juicy list, that's what I was saying. And I'm gonna start with entertainment. So there is a YouTube channel that I have wanted to tell y'all about for a long time, but I kept forgetting because he doesn't post very often. It's one of these channels where the videos are very clearly essays. Like they're these beautifully crafted, sort of short form essays being presented as a voiceover of images. So the per it's not a talking head style, it's like imagery pieced together, kind of collage style, and then the essay is like voiced over. And uh, the essays or the videos, I mean, I'm saying that they're essays because that's how I think about them, but they're really just incredibly well put together, thoughtfully written, fun to watch YouTube videos. 
and they're all about theme park design. And I'm sure it's like potentially like a niche thing. Like you might, you, whoever you are watching might not be into it, but you, whoever you are watching might be into it. I'm particularly into it because I really love theme parks and I love rides. And I also really love uh, the, the idea of like an, a story arc or an artistic arc. He's looking at theme park design, like theme park rides, the way that an artist looks at art and he's critiquing them the way an art critic critiques art. So looking at kind of the entire universe of theme park rides and stories and the way that they interact, mythologies, stories that we know from like the television and film and things that are sometimes the themes of theme parks and the idea of of like the storyline of a ride, the arc of a ride, the experience, and the way that theme park designers either succeed or fail at kind of wedding those things together. It's just so good. And the guy who does the channel, he's just, he's lovely to listen to. He has, you know, that kind of like sense of humor and sense of humanity in, in his voice that makes a really good voice actor, for example, in like um, audiobooks. Like I think he would be a good audiobook reader um, and, you know, kind of dry and just absolutely charming. So the the channel's called The Q-Line Lectures, and um, it's not picking up very much steam, I think, especially considering the quality and the, uh, the level in of interest that I believe that there is among YouTube watchers in this topic. I think because it takes so long to produce a single video and so the posts are few and far between. I'm really glad to be able to share to all of you that it's there and that it's great because I think that this channel deserves like hundreds and thousands of more subscribers than it currently has. So I'll link the Q line lectures down below. I was particularly delighted recently to see a new video from him, the first in like six months or something like that. And it reminded me to put it on this list. It definitely cheered me up. The second thing on the list is something that's been on the list before, but I'm gonna be more specific this time. So I've talked about paper books, like in in a past what's cheering me up right now, paper books were what was cheering me up. And um, you know, I had just gotten a bunch of paper books and I was reading them and it was causing me to 100% eschew my screens at night and not to take my laptop to bed, but rather to read a paper book in bed until I fell asleep. That's my ideal state of being. And um, I had drifted very badly towards the end of last year. I think it was honestly, uh, maybe it was actually after the election, but I think it was like the stress of the end of the year drove me back to some of my less than ideal habits. And for me, I think, and I, I think I have talked about this before, but I think not taking my laptop into bed with me and not looking on my phone when I'm falling asleep, but rather just setting my alarm and putting the phone down and then reading while I fall asleep, doing that, it's like the linchpin of all of my self-care. I feel like when I'm doing that, all of the other ways in which I strive to take care of myself kind of fall naturally, or they kind of like branch off naturally from that. And I think that it's because when I don't look at screens as I'm falling asleep, I fall asleep earlier and I sleep better and I'm more likely to sleep through the night. Then I'm more likely to wake up early and then I'm more likely to do my morning meditation. I'm more likely to spend time on my writing in the morning, like a significant amount of time. And that improves, both of those things improve my mental health dramatically. Like they're probably the two things that matter the most to my mental health if I'm continuing to work on my writing and if I'm meditating. So then those pieces are in place. And then I feel like I have room in the rest of the day to do everything else because I've, I've gotten up early and the pacing of the day is better. I don't feel panicked. And you know, I end up making time for skincare, making time to like take a bath or whatever. And um, that means that I am like just more thoughtful. I feel more positive. I feel like I'm succeeding at being healthy and then I'm more prone to eat better and drink more water. And to me, it really, really starts with not giving into the temptation to take a screen to bed with me. And that's where paper books come in. So I had fallen off the wagon. I had gone back to the screens towards the end of last year. And at the beginning of this month, I was like, I have got to get some paper books. I have got to go back to that one little habit. I've got to flip that one little habit so that all of the other things will flip in its wake. I decided to get some paperback versions, some cheapy peepy paperback versions of the first couple of books in the Adam Dog Leash series by P.D. James. And you guys know I love mysteries. Like I love a good, like a taut, really richly written cozy 
mystery, like murder mystery in the English countryside, basically. And um, these are some of the best of the best, like P.D. James. The, what I love is when there's a mystery writer who's fully 100% committing, committed to writing mysteries and like in the genre, like squarely in the genre, no dilly dallying, no pussyfooting around, just like, it's just, it's like Ag Agatha Christie, you know, like inheritors of Agatha Christie's type of work, but such good writers that they creep ever closer to that line between like popular fiction and literature staying on the side of popular fiction, like like never crossing the line into literature, but they get so close to the line that you feel like your face is pressed up against the glass of literature when you're reading it and like the line is like a little bit blurred. It's those kinds of mystery writers that I love. And P.D. James is like the epitome of that, like the most literary mystery writer. And yet the quality of the mysteries, the caliber is very, very high. I'm sorry, somebody is mowing, mowing a lawn somewhere nearby and um it's been on and off all day and i just I, I tried to wait it out and i couldn't and i thought that it was over i'm sure you'll be able to hear that i'm sorry and joe when you're doing the sound i'm sorry people people with their lawns just let the grass grow let the grass be free and why is it so loud that thing it sounds like a leaf blower um what were you talking about oh yes so pd james and the other um you know contemporary writer that I that I think of this way that I've talked about before is Louise Penny. I really love Louise Penny's books. And P.D. James, I've listened to everything that she ever wrote, like every single book that she ever wrote, I've listened to on tape. I like have them all through Audible and I've listened to them before, but I've never read them on paper. And I've always, like I, I got really into P.D. James several years ago, listened to all the books, and then I was like, too bad, it's over. I've now read all the P.D. James, P. James books and she didn't write anything else, so that's it. And I was sad. So every time I think of her, I think like, oh, I'm, there's nothing there for me. I've like experienced it all. But I realized when I was considering buying some of these books that I don't remember anything about them except that they were awesome. Like all I remember is being so inspired by her use of vocabulary, by the sort of, grim, sl slow build of the way the characters interact. I just remember being being awe-inspired, you know what I mean, by the caliber of the work. And I don't actually really remember the main character. I don't really remember who, who did it in any of the mysteries. And so it's like I can start all over again because it's been long enough. And also probably I didn't retain the stuff as much because I was listening to it and I'm a more visual learner than I am like an aural learner. So, you know, I'm reading them again. I'm just on the first one, the very first, her debut novel, right? It's called Cover Her Face, her iconic debut novel. And I don't even remember how it ends. So that is just absolutely delightful. The book itself and the fact that I have, I bought the first three, having them and having them to look forward to every night is really cheering me up. And then the fallout of reinstating that healthy habit throughout the rest of my life, um, that has been cheering me up too. Third on the list, <laughs> Moana. Have you seen it? Has everybody seen it? Because I had, I had already seen it. I watched it on an airplane a couple of years ago and basically cried the whole time, or at least cried like so many times while I was watching that I felt like I was crying the whole time. Maybe other things were going on. I don't know, it was particularly emotional, but I just remember Moana making me cry a lot when she's like, I am Moana. And I was just like, yes, you are. It's so good though. And similarly, I remembered it being wonderful. And I then realized that I kind of didn't remember most of what happened. Maybe this is like a delightful thing that happens when you get old and you start forgetting stuff or like you don't have as good of a memory as before or like there's so much in your brain that you can't retain everything as well as you did when you were in your youth. So you like watch a movie and then a couple years later you can watch it again and it's almost like you're watching it for the first time. Is that a thing? Cause it, I feel like this is happening to me with both of these things and I'm actually kind of here for it because I watched Moana again, like last month. I mean, it wasn't even that long ago. And I just, <laughs> it was like I was watching it for the first time and it was just so good. Lin-Manuel Miranda wrote the music. You know, he, he's the one who wrote Hamilton. He's Hamilton. Um, and I didn't know that actually until recently when I, I watched it, I enjoyed it so much and then I kind of looked it up and, it, and I found that he, I think he wrote either all or most of the songs. I just, I like it so much that I've been listening to the soundtrack listening to the Moana soundtrack while I go about my business. And this is like the real kicker. This 
is the, is the, uh, it's like the last word in what's cheering me up. I watched it again. I watched it again. I watched the same movie like within a month of itself. And I never do that. I, I'm usually like, if I've seen it any time in the past couple of years and I have any memory of it, I'm like, oh, this old thing again, yawn. Who would wanna watch? I'm not a person who like repeat watches. I don't like that sense of familiarity. I like to not know what's gonna happen. And if I remember what's gonna happen, I'm like, why would I continue watching this? But of course I remembered what was gonna happen because I had just watched it and it really cheered me up to just enjoy it again. Like that's how good I feel that it is. And watching it cheered me up and then watching it again really cheered me up. Let's talk about makeup. Uh, the Terry Barber thing. Terry, my Terry Barber inspired palette. It's actually here because my my desk here before me is an absolute mess. It has the detritus of like the past five videos I filmed are all here. You've seen it if you've been watching my channel. This is my palette that I made to use to do a bunch of different kinds, a bunch of different colors of looks inspired by Terry Barber. It's not just having the palette, although of course I've loved it. I love making something new to me out of stuff I already own and then having it there day after day to kind of provoke me towards creativity and you know the, the feeling of everything old being new again and the feeling of, of freshness just that comes from mixing and rearranging. Obviously, I love that. But also I've been returning, it's like looking at Terry Barber's Instagram account is driving me to my palette and then looking at the palette is driving me back, back to the Instagram account. So I've been going through, I've been almost on the daily going to his Instagram page and scrolling through and clicking on things and reading and looking close up at things. And I just feel like I've, I feel like I've taken a master class sort of. Obviously it's just in Instagram captions, you know what I mean? And in, in Instagram pictures, but I feel like I've, apprenticed myself to some of what he has to offer, at least what he's bringing to that particular platform. Thinking about it, thinking it over, trying out the techniques, thinking about the idea of the beauty in um, a single color or a single finish, or um, the detail of having combined a color and a finish in a certain way, and uh, the use of matte shadows in a new way, scaling back in a particular way, the idea of asymmetry of, of something tangled, like a, a brow or a lash being tangled or being kind of sticky. Kind of the idea of letting the planes and shapes of the face really shine through rather than trying to change the shape of the face and then just adorning the natural shape with a different finish in a certain area or a different color in a certain area. I, I've just, I've enjoyed learning from Terry Barber in my own way by pursuing his work and absorbing his work over and over again and then doing makeup on my own face that's inspired by his work. It's, it's really added light to my life lately. And it's been, um, it's been enriching in a way that is similar in some ways to the way that we get excited or we get cheered up by new makeup but I feel like it's gone way beyond that. It's both. It's been both broader and deeper than that. And so it's reminded me that there's discovery to be made. There are discoveries to be made. There's new newness, new stuff to be uncovered in my current makeup collection that I already own. It's reminded me of that in kind of a, a, a different way than just shopping my stash because I've been like tying my stash shopping to this other person, this, this other artist and this other mind. So uh, I really recommend, <laughs> I mean, Terry Barber in particular, but also just the process of taking inspiration from another person or from another artist and going into what you already have as a way of, of spinning what you already have and making it fresh and new and exciting again. Oh, I'm getting really excited about making my own body scrub. Julia and I filmed a video reviewing all the body scrubs that we've ever tried that we can remember. <laughs> that went up like last week on my channel. We decided we wanna make our own scrubs. So based on some of your recommendations I, and based on some research, I ended up placing an order for some mix-ins, like some oils, and some really big sugar grains and some essential oils we can kind of mix our own scents. And I just can't wait for it to get here and we're gonna film a video testing it out and like 
trying different ratios and recipes and formulas and scents and stuff like that. And I'm sure it's gonna be a grand old time. So just like thinking about making some, so here's the thing, it obviously is exciting because it's fun to like do a craft project that you've never done. I do this kind of thing with my channel budget from time to time, you know what I mean? I'll like buy something to review and like do a look with it. And there is this kind of like craft project aspect. You're like getting a tool you've never gotten before and you're trying for an effect you've never tried for before. Um, it's that, but it's like outside of the realm of makeup. It's in the realm of body care and it just feels like expansive and delicious and really, really fun to think about and exciting. It's gonna be exciting, an exciting review, you know, but instead of reviewing a product, we're reviewing this alternative to buying product, which is to make your own. And that's the other part of it that has been really inspiring to me because you know, it's not like I've never thought about it before. And sometimes when I talk about cost per use of products that I use over and over, that I use up and then buy again, sometimes when I talk about it, people in the comments are like, you should make your own, you should look into making your own. And I'm always like, oh God, like, no, it would end up costing way more. I know how it goes with, with those kinds of things. It always ends up costing more and it costs you so much in time and then you can never quite get things right. And it just, I've made a lot of stuff over the years. I've made my own of a lot of stuff. And I, I know that sometimes the cost, not just sometimes, frequently, the cost benefit analysis, if you incorporate the time that it takes, doesn't actually work out in your favor the way that you think that it will. So for that reason, I've been a little bit shy of the idea, but actually looking into the ingredients, the components, and um, thinking about the ratios, how much they cost and how much you get at once when you buy the ingredients and how much you could make with that, how long it would stretch. It's actually got me thinking about the kinds of products for which it might be a good thing to try. That it might actually not be as hard as I think it would be to save money and get really nice stuff with making one's own. And then there's the huge, huge benefit of being able to refill your containers over and over again, rather than having to purchase a new plastic container every time you buy, for example, body wash, and then recycle that container. If you buy like a soap base in bulk, it just comes in one container. And then if you have another container that you re refill over and over again, you're using much less packaging, much less plastic overall, in addition to saving money. So it's not like I'm gonna suddenly start making like all of my own, everything, absolutely everything, soap and makeup and body scrub and bath bombs and stuff. But thinking about it has cheered me up. Thinking about moving in that direction, or at least starting to experiment in that direction and possibly finding alternatives for certain products that I depend on, that I use a lot, that I tend to have to buy several times in the course of a year, finding like make your own alternatives to that, where I could kind of tailor the scent to my, to my preferences and the level of oil and stuff. It's just exciting. So stay tuned. Obviously I'll be circling back with that. The second to last thing on the list that's been cheering me up is being on a no buy. Uh, so I did my plan, I followed through with my plan. I had a little spending season at the very beginning of the year, the first week. It went a little bit longer than a week because um, I actually, and I will be making like more content about this and I'll, I'll deliver this material with more confidence and clarity at that time. But I kind of wish I hadn't done it in the very first week. It, it, like, it was happening really fast and I was like, ah, I don't even know what I want. And, um, I wish I had done it in the last week of January and given myself some time. I did it in the first, it was like the first 10 days of January. I decided on a little budget and I spent it and that was it. And then it was over and now it's over and I am not allowing myself to buy any of the things in those categories, my problem categories, those things that I like. I'm not allowing myself to buy any of that stuff until the first week of April. And um, I'm trying not to do replacements either. Like if there's something that I truly don't have anything that will work. Like if I really don't have a single speck of shampoo and I can't even borrow Joe's or something, then I'll probably, you know, allow myself to replace that. But I'm, I'm trying not to do like replacements for things like bras or even, even like my color corrector. I'm almost out. I might just see how it goes. I'm just, I'm really, I would really like for as few packages as possible to arrive at my house in between now and April, like at my own hand, like because I bought a thing. I would really like to have it be minimized. I, I passionately am trying to do that. So um, that's where I'm at right now. You know, like that's the phase I'm in right now. And it's so, it's so great. It's so relaxing. I, 
I, there's this list of things that I was thinking about buying and you know, they're haunting me now. Like I had a list of things I was thinking about buying and I bought a couple of them with the budget that I decided on. And then all the other things that I didn't get, they're haunting me online because of retargeting ads. So I'll be like, you know, just reading the news or something and then these pictures will pop up and it'll be like, remember me? You thought about buying me during the first 10 days of January and then you decided not to. You could still do it. I'm still here, you could still buy me. What's happening to me is like, I'll see the picture and I'll be like, Ugh, cause I, I'll, um, it's still sort of muscle memory, the decision-making. So like the, the first 10 days I was, I was handling all this decision-making. I was just like decisions to the left of me, decisions to the right of me. Like every morning I would wake up and I was like, hmm, I don't know, am I gonna get the sweater? Am I gonna get the pants? And like, you know, then I'd wake up the next morning and I'd be like, hmm, am I gonna get the sweater? Am I gonna get the pants? And uh, you know, and the picture of the sweater will come up, you know, and I'll be like, Bleh. and it'll be like, am I gonna get the sweater? Am I gonna get the pants? Like the, my, my body still wants to like, um, scratch that little itch, you know, like to to obsess. And then the no buy like descent, the, my, my memory that I'm actually, that the decisions have all been made and that it's over and that the gate has closed and that there are, there's nothing to wonder about and April's a long way off. It will sort of like descend like this calm and I'll just be like, oh, it's over. There's no more decisions and I'm not gonna buy that sweater and, and it doesn't matter. It's, it's like the, the, the muscle memory is me trying to decide how much I want it. There's this part of my brain when it sees the picture that's like, how much do you want that? Do you want it enough? How much do you want it? Is it worth it? When, it, when I get reminded that I'm on a no buy, the voice that's talking back to that first voice is saying, it doesn't matter how much you want it. It doesn't, even if you regret not buying it in the first 10 days, it doesn't matter. There's no, no consequence of your desire or or you're not desiring it or you're deciding for it or deciding like you don't have to ask yourself how much you want it and try to suss out whether or not it would be worth it to you because no matter what the answer is the resulting action is going to be the same which is going to be that you're not going to buy it it's been this little delightful moment in my day every day since I decided to close the door on my spending season. And uh, it's, it's really been cheering me up. I'm sure it'll get harder, right? Like I'm saying this now, I'm say, it, making it out like it's all sunshine and roses right now because I'm just on the tail end of the spending season. So I'm still like wearing the new thing that I got and I'm still like, I still feel like this kind of excitement of having decided to buy a couple of nice things for myself. When things calm down and settle down and, and April starts to feel like a really long way off, I'm sure it'll get hard. And I'll see a picture of something that I once considered buying and I'll be like, I really want it. I really want to buy it. It hurts so bad. But for the time being, I have, um, I've really been noticing the sharp contrast between the, um, the anxiety of the spending season and the relief and um, the calm and the sort of the safe harbor kind of of this time that has come after the spending season, the no spend season. Uh, it's kind of been amusing to see like, how very different it is and how how differently it affects me. And it's been delightful to observe that. And, uh, and I'm really glad that I'm doing what I'm doing. Okay, for the last thing, the last thing that's been cheering me up, although cheering me up is kind of like two week a word or two week a, a collection of a handful of words, two week of, of a group of words, two week a phrase. Cheering me up is like two week a phrase because it's really profoundly affected my um, life experience. And that is this class that I took. I took this online class. It was a six week immersion in compassion. And I, I just want to tell you about it, but you know what I'm going to do? Um, I recently filmed a little check-in just for my patrons on my Patreon page. And um, it's something that I've been doing a little bit that I'm going to continue to do once in a while. And in the check-in, I talked about this class that I was taking. When I'm filming those Patreon check-ins, it's just kind of off the cuff. It's, it's like no notes, very disorganized and very le like um, less edited. Like I, I'm, there's a lot of like ums and ahs and spaces. It's just kind of like this casual, like a cross between a live and a video kind of. But when I was talking of, off the cuff about this class that I took, this, this six week course online, I feel like I did a better job in that 
video for my patrons than I could possibly do. And when I was editing it this morning, I was going back over it, I was like, oh, I was like, I wanna talk about the compassion class again. I'm daunted because I don't think that I can do, do it as much justice as I did in that video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop a clip from my Patreon only video into this video right now. And you'll see me wearing like this really dramatic pink blush draping look, look and pink ruffled sweater which is a look that I filmed. And so you'll see me, if you like that look or if you hate it or whatever, I don't know. When you see that look and you're like, OMG, pink, pink the house down boots, just know that that look is coming and it's probably gonna be really different from how I look now and it's probably gonna be really shocking, but it's okay, it's worth it. I want you to see what Hannah from a couple days ago said about this compassion course when she was just talking off the cuff and in a natural way to her Patreon subscribers. So here you go. It's been amazing. Really, I mean, I think of it as kind of like a watershed moment in my life. It's really given me a path towards a way of being that I've always wanted for myself and that I've been trying in my own little way to get towards, like to get on or to find a way towards. And I just feel like it's like a path I've been on, but it's been very foggy, trying to trying to clarify all of these different ways of thinking about the spirit and different kinds of tradition, spiritual traditions and uh, you know how it's mixed up with my own experience of like living in America and living in the Western world and what I learned from my family and all of this stuff. And, and I've just been sort of like groping towards this thing. And I feel like with this class, it's like the fog cleared and I see the path and I'm on the path towards really deepening my capacity for actual love, like actual unconditional love, not just for people who I deeply love, but for all creatures, you know, and the way that that will change my life path or inform my life path. It's like, I can see the way towards that way of being. And I'm not there yet. It's, you have to walk the path. You know what I mean? Like it takes time to develop the heart, but I feel like I finally have uh, a, a roadmap for developing the heart and it's literally like changed my life. Like I just, I, I feel, or it's given me a way to change my life, you know? And so that's happening. And so I, I'm really passionate about it. I, I think that um, so many people can benefit from this and then the world will benefit tremendously from people having that fog cleared, you know? So um, if you haven't heard me talking about it before, or if you did, but it didn't seem like a good time, I encourage you to check it out. I really do. Uh, it's, it's pretty special and it's so beautifully taught. It is like taking a class. It's really like a class, like tons of information, some reading, some homework. Uh, but I found the time commitment to be extremely manageable and it just meets once a week online for an hour and it's very low pressure. It's just, it's not video. You're not like in class at, in, in a, like the image of you. You can just sign on and listen. Very low pressure for participation. It's all audio. Um, so yeah, just wanted to like reiterate that because I know that there are a lot of you out there who... Um, well, what, how can I say this? It's not like I know. I suspect that it will mean for some of you and be for some of you what it was for me. Um, so if I can have a hand in like opening that door for you, I want to. And it is, a, it's a sliding scale. So you can, I think that the cost, the actual cost of the class is a couple hundred dollars, but you can pay anywhere from $40 to that amount to take the class. She's offering it on a sliding scale, just you know, knowing that not everyone has the kind of disposable income that's required to pay the full amount, especially right now. Um, so that's another reason that I feel comfortable wholeheart wholeheartedly recommending it right now because it's not like I'm recommend, it is technically a $200 class, but I'm not out here being like, you've got to take this $200 class, it'll change your life. It's like, you can, pay what you can afford all the way down to $40, which is an amazingly low price given the depth and complexity of the offering and how long I know it's taken Julia to develop this class and, and then to think of how long it's taken her to live the life that she's lived 
to seek the knowledge that she sought to be able to be the kind of teacher that she is. So that's it. I don't think that I can say much more than that. I know that it was a bit of a long clip um, and probably very different energy from right now because <laughs> um, it was a whole thing. Um, but she said it better than I could have. And, um, you know, I'll link it down below. Um, I know it, I'm sure that it's not for everyone. That's why I saved it for the end of the video. But for those of you out there for whom it is the right thing, I'm very, very glad that I that I'm able to share it with you because it's the real deal. And that is it. That's the video, that's what's been cheering me up. I hope that some of this stuff can go on to cheer you up too or be helpful to you in, in some way. We really need balm for the troubled soul these days. Um, it's, it's just continuing to be such a wild ride, life on earth in 2020 and, and 2021. Um, but I'm sending all of you all of my love uh, and really, really hoping that you are taking good care of yourselves so that you can be the most effective versions of yourselves as you do your work in the world. <laughs>